So hello everybody, it's Steve Bates at the BIA. I'm with Laura Collister and we're here for the BIA's Brexit webinar. Hopefully we can give you the perspective of the life science industry on what's going on uh, for the first one of the new year. As you can see, we are 70 days away from um, Brexit day or 692 days if there is a transition period. We always like to keep the clock countdown ready for you. So I hope that what we can uh, give you today is uh, an update on what's gone on in the UK, uh, an EU reaction and what we've been doing about it. And uh, I suppose the, the big thing that uh, we've seen in the UK in the last week is the UK Parliament defeating the deal in a meaningful vote. There's now uh, discussions in Parliament that we'll go into, but for our sector, um, detailed preparations continue uh, for no deal. And I think uh, it's important to set out what's working and where there are some uh, wrinkles in the road on that going forward. There will, of course, be a chance to ask questions uh, at the end. Uh, do please write in your questions and we'll get to as many as we can. But I'll try and not do this in more than uh, a little over half an hour. Um, we do these monthly and this was the one that we did last uh, last time round. Uh, if you're interested in it, these are available uh, on the uh, uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, but I thought I might just uh, pull out a couple of things from uh, the webinar we used last time. And you may remember these were my framing thoughts from last time. I said that... Uh, any deal will be driven by a crisis. Uh, UK politicians have a limited understanding of the long lead times and practicalities that most of our businesses work to. Parliament isn't focused on the economic future of the, the country and in the rolling political crisis, Erskine May, uh, that's the person who's pictured up uh, reading the stuff in the, the top right hand corner uh, and is the rule book for the uh, UK parliamentary process is more important than Theresa May. Anything can happen and probably will. So um, I think we'll see how some of that plays out, uh, has played out in the recent weeks. And I nailed my colours to the mast last time round and said uh, I thought that uh, we might well see a delay. We've not yet, but uh, I'll return to this uh, and give you my assessment as to where we may be uh, in terms of a future later in the webinar. People reminded me last time round that uh, I wasn't saying enough about how fantastic the UK sector is uh, in the context of Brexit. So I'm making sure that I do so very clearly. We have a, financial, a fantastic finance report about uh, investment into the sector uh, coming next week uh, in time for the gala dinner. And you will be amazed and astounded at the resilience uh, or uh, entrepreneurial uh, resourcefulness of companies in our ecosystem in getting uh, global inward investment. Uh, fantastic news is coming. Uh, and of course, the Brexit news needs to be seen in the context of the government putting uh, significantly new investment into science infrastructure. Um, pounds value is making uh, UK assets and services globally attractive over the last couple of years. We are in, uh, we are ready as a sector. We are well prepared and we do have uh, thoughts and uh, engagement processes, whether we end up with a Brexit that leads to a, uh, a hard Brexit and leads to a US trade deal or whether we stay aligned with the EU uh, regulatory system. And uh, we've not wasted the crisis by making sure that uh, we've worked with the government on industrial strategy and sector deals. And it was good to see uh, that um, confidence reflected in what I thought was a very strong JP Morgan week with many companies over uh, seeking investment, explaining their developments uh, in San Francisco earlier this month. And of course, if you're talking about the UK, uh, if people ask, I always remind people that we're the world's third global cluster for uh, life science companies, uh, home to three of the top five universities for preclinical, clinical research and health sciences, a world leader in cell, cell and gene therapy, genomics and AI, all drivers of key uh, value in the sector going forward. We continue to lead uh, Europe in terms of funding, a great regulatory regime with a strong reputation and a sizable sector of over five and a half thousand companies generating 30 billion in exports. None of this is changed by uh, Brexit. So please remind people of this as you are talking about the UK uh, within your companies or to, uh, to others. Now, I was struck today by uh, this letter in the Times. It's got a bit of coverage where um, high profile Germans have pled with the UK to stay in the EU. It was in the Times today, um, uh, the successor to Angela Merkel. And uh, for me, more importantly, the former Arsenal goalkeeper, Jens Lehmann, said uh, that, uh, uh, that Britain has become part of who we as Europeans are. and Therefore, we'd miss Britain. They say, crucially for me, we would miss the legendary British black humour, going to the pub after work hours to drink an ale. We'd miss tea with milk and driving on the left hand side of the road and we would miss seeing the panto at Christmas. So that line, of course, I would say, oh, no, you wouldn't. Uh, but more than anything else, we would miss the British people, our friends across the channel. 
Therefore, Britons should know from the bottom of our hearts we want them to stay. And in homage to this, I have decided to uh, include in today's webinar uh, significant examples of key moments in historic UK black humour. And uh, for those of you who are Brits who know this or Germans who are fans of it, we will have the dead parrot sketch. We will have more Monty Python in the form of uh, Tizonia Stratch. Uh, he's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. The Ministry of City Walks and I have a cunning plan. So um, I'm sorry it's not Dallas and Dynasty today, but it's only because the Germans have asked, but there will be some of this and how it relates to the politics going forward. So UK update, what's happened? Um, we should be aware that uh, in the UK government, uh, Ludo Shaughnessy has stepped down from being the key minister uh, in our sector for family reasons. Uh, Nicola Blackwood will formally be, uh, shortly be, uh, become a peer and become the new parliamentary undersecretary of state for innovation. Um, she's known well to the sector, former Oxford MP, health minister and chair of the Science and Technology Committee. So uh, it's not the greatest photo of her, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's good to have somebody who knows the sector well uh, taking up a, a key seat at an important time. This is the big news. The deal that we've been working on for uh, a couple of years, the government have been working on for a couple of years, had agreed with the EU, was blocked by the UK Parliament very significantly. I'm sure you saw this uh, in the news elsewhere. The Prime Minister lost the vote 432 against 202 for. And um, in classic British understatement, I will just say that this was a record defeat for a UK government ever. Um, this means that Theresa May is unable to deliver the deal she's worked on for, for a couple of years. Um, she's pledged to uh, come forward with a plan for what she's going to do on Monday in Parliament and started talks with uh, other, other parliamentarians, uh, but uh, not with the leader of the opposition, Jeremy Corbyn. And uh, I have put up here uh, my interpretation of this uh, from a, a Monty Python film, uh, Great British Humour, where the knight fights on despite having both arms and both legs chopped off by the other knight, saying, tis merely a scratch. So uh, good one to, to see if you've not seen it. Uh, if you're under 40, you may not know this one uh, is a great film. What do we say? Well, we really do not want to see a no deal disorderly Brexit. It must be avoided. Um, uh, we've worked really hard, as you have, to prepare for uh, uh, um, a no deal, but not everything can be stockpiled. And we're still lacking detail on uh, transport operating systems. Uh, time is running out uh, and we really do not want to see uh, a no deal disorderly Brexit. Therefore, that's why the BIA is calling on the government to rule out a no deal Brexit in line with that which you've seen from uh, the CBI and others. So um, uh, and that's the important thing that needs to happen now. Despite all this at the beginning of the week, um, uh, Theresa May did win a vote of no confidence, 325 for, 306 uh, against. Uh, this again is unprecedented in UK uh, constitutional history, in part because there's a new act which enables fixed term parliaments. Uh, so uh, despite being um, being severely damaged the other day, she does continue to fight on very much like the wounded knight in Monty Python. What happens now? And I'm indebted to the Daily Mail website for uh, this schematic. Uh, so you'll see at the top, she is going to bring back uh, Plan B to uh, MPs next week. Uh, she may at the seat at the top try again, or she may come back with a plan that's a softer Brexit. We don't know which. Uh, there may be a second vote, which she might win. We don't know. Or she might lose, which could lead to another vote of confidence uh, or, or her resignation. Uh, this could lead. Uh, Parliament may take control. And I'll go into some more detail about how Parliament may take control in a minute. Uh, we may have paralysis and the clock running down. We might have a soft Brexit. But broadly, we could end up with uh, with the options that I've talked about before. Uh, which are uh, a delay, an extension to Article 50 at the bottom, uh, a crash out, a no deal, um, uh, or, or two ways in which you go back to the people as a second referendum or a general election. And here I would uh, describe this as uh, the dead parrot. Uh, in a classic uh, comedy scheme, we see John Cleese uh, returning a parrot to a pet shop, which is perceived as dead and uh, and uh, the, uh, the salesman endeavours to convince him that this is how the parrot should be. Uh, will Theresa May come and sell the dead parrot once more to Parliament? And how will that go down? Of course, in the sketch, the, uh, the uh, John Cleese in the end is very happy to take the parrot in one version of this. Uh, so who knows? Uh, but the core point being, we don't know. But these, I think, is, the, the, is where it could go. Now, um, 
after the vote, there was a, a, a teleconference um, uh, for business leaders from Philip Hammond, Greg Clark and Stephen Barclay, uh, significant cabinet ministers, um, uh, which was leaked to the Telegraph uh, in, in recent days. And the importance for this is uh, I believe that it uh, uh, it reported that uh, that uh, the Chancellor said that he believed that a no deal Brexit could be taken off the table within days. Um, uh, by means of a backbench bill, bill that could be uh, could be used to stop a no deal, and that uh, that this might even be backed by by ministers. And the reason I think this is important is that this is was obviously a signal to business uh, on this from um, from senior government ministers. It's a suggestion of a very um, unusual uh, constitutional step that I'll take you through, but I think it's important because it may mean that um, Parliament, in taking back control of the process, could rule out no deal, which would have significant implications for um, for our businesses. So I'm going to take you through it. And I liken this to a famous catchphrase from the Blackadder series uh, in which Baldrick, the somewhat silly uh, um, sidekick to the, the main character, uh, uh, although he's perceived as stupid, always says, I have a cunning plan. And is this one of the cunning plans that is being developed? The next thing I think we're thinking about is um, there's quite a lot this week since the big vote of uh, entrepreneurial thinking, uh, some sort of crazy ideas that are knocking around um, that normally you wouldn't give the time of day to. Um, uh, hence the reference here to the bottom to the Ministry of Silly Walks. Uh, are we entering the, the, an area where uh, almost anything is on the table? And, I, and I, I, that's why we've put this, this slide together. Um, there is a suggestion that Parliament takes back control, the, the Bowles plan, as it's called, and I'll take you through that in a minute. There's been suggestions uh, that uh, the UK should hold a citizens assembly, getting uh, the public together to have a think about what the way forward might be. And people have mooted that, uh, you know, that's been used recently in Ireland. It's used by NICE when they do citizens juries. Um, could there be a, another referendum or two? How would that work? What would the questions be? Um, that's been talked about. Could there be a government of national unity? Uh, again, being talked about. Uh, I, 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 I don't give these great credence, but the point being that there are lots of uh, lots of very wacky suggestions out there at the moment as to the way forward a parliamentary commission this was talked about um, previous years where you get uh, senior figures together from within the parliaments get them to talk to each other and you can see there's some quite serious names uh, that are talking about this from from the uk uh, and i've added uh, my own personal ministry of city walks the idea that the queen actually starts running the country uh, if that one comes in i think you'll get very long odds on it even today but I'm going to take you about through the um, through the uh, the one that I think uh, is worthy of looking at, uh, uh, in part because it came up in the uh, the Chancellor's uh, business briefing, uh, and I'll just take you through it if I if I may. So it's uh, an idea from Conservative backbencher Nick Bowles with Nikki Morgan and Oliver Letwin, uh, who want us off the Brexit, and the idea is that um, uh, so 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 uh, so Nick Bowles is also someone who was uh, Michael Gove's campaign manager. So the politics of this mean that. Um, he, he sits uh, uh, in an interesting place in the Conservative Party, that the plan is that um, it would enable uh, backbench MPs to take control of parliamentary business, which is an innovation in itself, and then rush through new legislation in a single day, ruling out no deal, setting aside time for a new e-withdrawal bill to be written that could become law by mid-February. So it's a sort of cunning plan, a wheeze to make this to happen. Then the government could have three weeks to secure a new deal, that would take us to early in March. And then a group of senior MPs, the committee of committee chairs, which is called the liaison committee, would have the power to obtain a majority in favour of an alternative plan. And then the government could comply with that and implement the plan. And if not, the government could go back and say we need a bit more time to do it. So this is the, the bones of the Bowles plan. And it's so good that I think it should be made into a T-shirt. Keep calm, I have a cunning plan. Um, and this is something of the timetable that if it was to happen, uh, and who knows, and this is speculation could happen like this that um, we'll see the uh, the amendable motion from the prime minister next week others put their bits down following tuesday tuesday the 29th there's um uh, there's the debate and parliament takes back control if it's got the bowls amendment in it is there then a single day legislation which rushes through both houses of parliament rules out no no deal then there's a, a, an ongoing chat about what a new eu withdrawal bill could be there's a renegotiation, the liaison bit, committee takes over, and if um, if there's a majority, the government have to go off and do it, and if they can't get a majority, there's a further um, uh, extension. 
normally this stuff is in the world of the, the fantasy, uh, these types of uh, wheezes in Parliament. But because we are at a um, constitutional moment, I think it is worthy of taking you through it for a few minutes. Um, because if any of this were to happen, then we would have no deal off the table by the end of January, which would have implications for business planning. And I realise that's only uh, less than two weeks away. So apologies for taking you through all of this. So where are we, where, where are we now? Um, this is where I think we are compared to, to previously. I think a deal is possible uh, if there is a revised deal as a result of more talks. Um, is it possible that we could crash out? Well, possibly, but I, I think that the UK Parliament will uh, come up with some form of wheeze, a cunning plan to prevent no deal. Don't know quite what that looks like yet, but um, that's where I think it's likely. I think whatever happens, there's a good chance that um, there's a delay, and that's what I said last time round. I'm still holding to that view that I think that there may well be a delay. Again, this is finger in the in the um, in the air, in the uh, in the wind style stuff for me. And anybody who says they really know what's going on, they don't. They don't. And uh, these are my guesses. Uh, and is it possible that Brexit doesn't happen? It's certainly possible that Article 50 could be withdrawn, or if we do end up with a second referendum, there is a vote to remain. So uh, I'm sorry that's not very. Uh, definitive, but I hope you can see why I've taken you through uh, some of that possibility. Um, is it easy to delay for a delay to happen? Can anybody just wave it? Uh, I think it is. It isn't as easy as people think, um, because the UK has to request a delay, an extension to Article 50, but there needs to be a reason, uh, and um, that needs to be justifiable and okay with the, all the EU 27 to agree. And they are, I think, concerned about the impact on the European parliamentary elections. So. Um, would something like uh, the Bowles plan, if it was to be executed, be uh, enough of a trigger? I don't know. Uh, the thing that uh, I think you need to remember in the back, from the back pocket is the UK Prime Minister is in a stronger position uh, because the European Court of Justice did a rule that the UK could unilaterally withdraw Article 50. Um, so uh, if something wasn't, if a, if a, if a, a deal uh, wasn't a deal to continue to discuss or an extension to Article 50 wasn't agreed. Uh, perhaps that would uh, it would you know the UK could do the ultimate thing and take Article 50 off the table. I don't think that will be without risk or cost, but um, uh, uh, it, it's not a straightforward thing to to, to kick this uh, down the road. But I think it it it, it, it is probable uh, at the, where we're at today. In another part of the forest, um, and I'm going to take breath here. No deal planning continues. Uh, and uh, if you think about it, this is made up of a number of building blocks as to what we would do if there were to be um, were to be uh, no deal. Um, uh, I think we've seen a, uh, a solid response in terms of MHRA taking the sector through what, what this means in terms of um, regulatory uh, position if there were to be no deal. And uh, we've recently sent out guidance in a BIA briefing. There's also um, reasonably well developed plans for medicine supply. Many of you have been participators in the survey. Uh, market authorization holders have had letters sent to them. We've continued with detailed webinars and many of you have engaged on that. Uh, on intellectual property, IP, uh, there is uh, an SPC, uh, uh, SI, so a Supplementary Protection Certificate um, uh, statutory instrument, uh, which uh, Laura and, and I will go into in a, meet in a moment that you need to be aware of. There is some problems around today. Only at lunchtime, uh, uh, new statutory instruments as to how things would operate in a serious shortage protocol have been laid. And on clinical trials, a request for information from clinical trial sponsors has been set out from uh, uh, from the Department of Health. Again, I'm not sure that's, that process is running somewhat delayed compared to the medicine supply work. And Laura will take you through um, what that is. I'm expecting also to see some more stuff uh, soon on um, falsified medicine directive and how that will operate. Uh, the ABPI have been taking a lead in that, but um, we may see some some more rules or some more guidance as to how that will operate soon. And I've seen questions uh, tabled in Parliament by uh, Labour front bench around um, restrictions to parallel imports and exports and who knows if uh, other areas could be coming. So although on one, the first half of this webinar I've said, please be ready for potentially no deal being off the table by January the 30th, we're now going to say, well, we need to continue to understand the planning for a no deal that could happen in less than 70, or in 70 days time. And Laura, maybe I can ask you to take over and talk about some of the detail that we've been working on. Yeah, so um, as Steve mentioned, um, we do have a BIA member briefing on the um, MHRA response um, to 
their consultation. Um, sorry, that's the MHRA's response after running their consultation and what they have taken on from industry. My colleague, um, Christiane, um, wrote that briefing, so please do email her if you would like a copy. Um, at the start of January on the 4th, um, the um, MHRA published um, updates its guidance on medicines, devices and clinical trials. Um, BIA, together with ABPI, had done a joint submission. There were um, there were movement on a few things of the issues we raised in the joint submission, um, which is actually available on our website. Um, and there were a few areas um, where there would have been some movement from the MHRA. So we welcomed that they reconsidered um, the requirement to have a sponsor, for the sponsor to have a UK chief investigator as a point of contact. Um, that is no longer there, it had been in the consultation, it was a point we made in our response. Um, however, um, there's still a requirement for additional oversight systems to verify QP certification for IMPs imported from the EU and EEA. Um, obviously, where things haven't quite gone to where we would like them to be, we will follow up over time with MHRA. In terms of medicines, um, we welcome the MHRA has agreed to provide free scientific advice to UK-based SMEs, great for BI members. Um, and then on orphan medicines, they've also um, proposing that the initial marketing authorization application fee will be refunded for UK SMEs, um, fully for SMEs, and then 10% for others. Um, so these now, um, needs to become statutory instruments. We're expecting that probably towards the end of next week. They'll then go to Parliament. They'll be there for um, a week or two, and then they will go to be debated and agreed or not, um, probably mid-February, assuming that no deal hasn't been ruled out. Um, but even though there are some things which I was saying hadn't quite gone to where we would like them to be, um, we're still having an ongoing dialogue um, with government on that. Um, in our briefing um, that we've sent to members, we also highlighted that MHRA um, at the, towards the end of last year contacted all um, marketing authorised hold, authorization holders of century authorised products um, around grandfathering. Um, it, they've also sent another follow-up letter. If you think you should have had these letters and you're a BI member and you haven't, please do let Christiane know and we can connect you on that. Um, we're also providing members feedback on the guidance um, on converting and centrally authorised products um, to UK marketing authorisations. So please do send Christiane any input if you have it. Um, so what have we said? Well, um, BI, we welcomed parts of the MHRA's updated guidance, um, especially those pieces that relate to the UK SMEs, um, and, um, but we will continue to push, um, sorry, um, we need to make sure the UK remains globally competitive, um, and we'll continue to push whatever we do, whether we leave the e with a deal or not. Um, on no-deal medicine supply um, contingency planning, BI is continuing to work on this um, with Department for Health um, and Social Care. Last week, we had a members webinar um, with ABPI, um, which involved the Board of Delivery Group, HMRC and D uh, Department of Health. This was around what happens at the borders if there is no deal. Um, we had lots of questions around when do I book my ferry and how do I do it? Um, that is the key thing that we're taking back to government is um, we would like an organisational plan and we would also like the medicine supply contingency to be roll on, roll off, um, just a different location. Um, so uh, let me talk to um, the uh, intellectual property uh, supplementary protection certificate um, statutory instrument. So um, sort of the, the, the way that this works is uh, the government is putting forward a raft of uh, different um, statutory instruments, secondary legislation, uh, to make sure that they are prepared for, for a no-deal scenario. But um, as they've put these into the, um, uh, into, the into Parliament, Parliament is, um, is not playing ball, and, uh, and the House of Lords, the secondary revising chamber in the UK Parliament, has kicked out a lot of these, which is very, very unusual. So they've negatived the SIs, which means that uh, there is uh, an ongoing debate between the House of Commons and the House of Lords as to whether these things can get through. Uh, and one of the ones that's in this um, ping pong or in this log jam or in this row between the two two two, 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 two is the um, SI, the SI on uh, patents amendments, which is about um, uh, supplementary protection certificates. 
um, Lord Warner um, uh, highlighted some of the, uh, our concerns around this. But I think what I would just say is that uh, the no deal uh, planning uh, for a legislative basis uh, needs lots of things to go from the government into Parliament and through Parliament very quickly on the nod. What we're seeing is that Parliament is not putting these things through on the nod. So I am a bit concerned that with only 70 days to go, that we won't have the legislative um, stuff through. It is not just our stuff, it's also trademarks and other things that are being uh, blocked, in part because of uh, Lord's concerns about the nature of how these have been um, been applied for, that they've all been done in a rush, they've not been consulted properly. But I think also that they see um, the, a political opportunity in uh, using this to, le to leverage power to, to, to block no deal. So it's one to watch. Uh, and all I'm saying is it means that as these plans are prepared, we're watching the parliamentary outcome on these. And these aren't sort of below the headlines, uh, but we're on it and uh, and we're aware. So uh, these have gone to the Lords. The Lords have negatived them. They've gone to the Commons. The Commons have okayed them. It has to go back to the Lords for a further discussion. And you may see some more on this from us this week. So, um, continuing on no deal here, um, one thing Department of Health has been doing is looking at serious shortage protocols. Um, this partly kicked off um, during the medicines um, stockpiling as part of the medicine stockpiling activity and BIA um, responded to a short, short consultation they did at the end of last year. However, that also included um, a potential regulation that would make um, cover serious shortage protocols even if there were no Brexit and would be permanent. This is around um, allowing um, pharmacists to switch medicines. Um, so we highlighted some concerns, especially around trigger points. When is there a shortage? When does it stop? Who signs it off? And also around the automatic substitution of biologicals. The SIEs have been laid today um, and um, will now go through the parliamentary process. Um, the headline um, on the right is from the BBC website this morning. Um, obviously, it's not Brexit yet. We're still part of the EU, and there are shortages of medicines um, already. Shortages of medicines anyway. Therefore, sort of um, concerns around will um, need it, the ability to react quickly post Brexit. Um, yeah, but if I can comment on this, Laura, I think the the, the key thing here is that um, there are shortages in the market for, for normal reasons uh, during um, during the normal run of business. Uh, we, we've seen those in the past and I think what we have with this with this particular SI is the conflux of both the thing that's getting ready for no deal but it was also a change to how the government wants to approach serious shortages. The two are conflated in this and I think we're also seeing some confusion as to whether um, some of the things that are being reported in the press are um, a direct respect for, uh, response to Brexit or maybe um, continuations or fluctuations in things that you would see in normal run of business. The key thing is new rules are available. Those ones are likely to be uh, uh, continue whether there's no deal or not, which is unlike some of the other ones. All right. So quickly moving on to clinical trials, Department for Health is looking to understand in more detail um, the number of clinical trials that may potentially be impacted if, um, because of disruption to clinical trial supplies if there is a no deal Brexit. They have written to sponsors of clinical trials and investigations to seek um, their input. Um, speaking to some of our members so far, um, it's um, not for a few of them. The um, ideal person within the company has not received it. So um, it's definitely worth checking internally that if you think you should have had it that you've got it and if not just um, contact um, Department of Health at the below email address and they can check for you who had received it. Thanks thanks Laura I, I would say so I think this is again it's another ask out by a, a slightly different bit of, um, of the Department of Health. Uh, we, we remember from the time when the, the medicines and contingency ask came out uh, in the summer uh, the email list that they uh, that were sent stuff to wasn't wasn't perfect, uh, and I think this is another case with that. So it may be worth checking on the clinical trials things if you're involved in that. They are keen to be able to help you uh, continue to get clinical trial supply in the event of a no deal Brexit, uh, and you need to be in the in the program to get the help. So you need to um, to, to sign up if you if you if, if you've not been found, um, and um, uh, it may well be worth checking on that one. Um, our position on all of this uh, from uh, the uh, uh, from both uh, an understanding of the fact that the, the deal has gone down, 
and preparations for no deal is, is this. We're really asking that no deal must be avoided. Um, we need uh, a deal to improve the chances of stability and increase the certainty for business. And uh, now that there's uh, um, a discussion in the UK Parliament, we believe there is a parliamentary majority to, to, to do the things that we've been advocating for, protect medicine supply for patients, um, uh, to ensure there's continued ongoing science and innovation collaboration, cooperation for medicines regulation, a focus on food to trade and customs, and we hope that they're reflected in the uh, in the proposals that may emerge uh, uh, as a result of the discussions. But there's a blinking long way to go from a political discussion in Parliament to an agreed future relationship that's agreed with the EU, and then it has to be turned into a legally binding, effective and workable future framework. And it's vital that patients are prioritised. We'll continue to work on the detail with members and despite all of this, we continue to deliver world leading life science, which continues to attract finance and talent from around the globe. What might come in the next few weeks? Well, um, Laura, do you want to take us through this one? Yep, I can do. So um, I think we've touched on lots of these dates already. Um, the amendable motion from the Prime Minister comes on Monday. Um, Parliament will then look at the, any amendments and see what are potentially possible. And then on the 29th, there will be debate and votes. Um, I think I mentioned before, um, end of January, expect the MHRA um, no deal SIs on medicines regulation. Um, Parliament then goes on recess for quite a long time um, from the 14th to 25th of February. Um, not sure whether that would be movable if it's, we are heading towards no deal at that time and they need the parliamentary time. Um, 21st to 22nd of March was the European Council, where I think they were sort of hoping um, a couple of years ago that that would be the one that tidied everything up before the exit day on the 29th of March. Um, there is another House Commons recess from the 4th to the 23rd of April, um, and that would be interesting timing if we were to have a no deal and leave on the 29th of March with no deal. And then just to highlight the European parliamentary elections, which we spoke about earlier, are the 23rd to 26th of May. Um, just moving on to a short um, EU update. Um, it seems ages ago, this was only the start of the week. There was a reassurance letter from um, Donald Tusk and Juncker. A um, few key points, they said um, they're unable to make any um, changes that are, um, they're unable to say anything that would change or is inconsistent with the withdrawal agreement. And um, they are committed to working speedily on subsequent agreements. So a backstop may not be triggered. And if it were triggered, it would be um, temporary. The withdrawal agreement and political declaration are part of the same negotiated package. And as soon as um, the UK um, signs the withdrawal agreement, they would start discussions on um, the future partnership. Um, the reaction to um, the meaningful vote outcome um, is that they, um, the EU side will continue the process of its ratification. Um, they, are, they feel that the withdrawal agreement is a fair compromise and they have put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, Donald Tusk, who's the EU president, he um, tweeted um, saying as a deal is, if a deal is impossible and no one wants a deal, then he will finally have the courage to say what the only positive solution is. This was interpreted in quite a lot of media as um, implying that his hope was that Brexit may not happen. Um, I think the other thing to point out, they were surprised at the level of defeat for the um, agreement in, in the UK Parliament. Um, little um, couple of quick slides on what's happening around the EU. So the view after um, the, um, the, vote, the meaningful vote in Parliament was frustration from the EU. Um, the German Chancellor saying, um, waiting for what happened, What's, um, waiting what the Prime Minister proposes, but there's still time to negotiate. Um, Ireland was putting pressure on the UK to find a Brexit solution, and the UK Parliament to find a Brexit solution, and um, France, um, Macron made a couple of um, quite um, pointed comments around um, people being lied to in the UK. Um, one thing we are noticing is quite a lot of um, concern as we start heading towards um, a no deal, potentially heading towards a no deal, and it's turning into a bit more reality. Um, the EU has been holding back some funds um, from departments just in case the um, Brexit bill is not paid by the UK. Um, there were some objections to um, the recent ferry contracts, um, especially from the French ports and the Channel Tunnel. Um, 
BIA, along with other organisations, have consistently said we want patients to be prioritised, especially in the case of no deal. But what appears to be happening is ultimately it's financial concerns and economic concerns that are turning countries, um, mobilising the countries to sort of break ranks a little bit more. So we're seeing no deal preparation spreading and side deals being done. So I, um, Spain and the UK have done something on voting. Um, we did something, there was something done with Portugal um, around um, the ability to stay. Um, and then there's a headline there about France triggering its contingency plan. Thanks, Laura. You can see, uh, I hope that the, the BIA team have been fantastic on the detail. Uh, Christian has done a great job. Laura has done a great job uh, uh, on some of this fast moving activity. So what have we been doing and what are we doing for you? Well, um, uh, we have a ministerial meeting with the new minister, uh, Nicola Blackwood, uh, in the coming week. We continue to engage with parliamentarians um, uh, through uh, various channels uh, as parliament uh, looks to be an important space for the next couple of weeks. And we have a formal submission uh, today to the Science and Technology Select Committee who've asked about Laura, what they asked about. Was the no question. deal planning for science. No deal planning for science. Um, we're continuing to work with the MHRA uh, in terms of um, uh, their plans for no deal ahead of them tabling their SIs. Uh, we work on the, uh, the, the, the follow up on the serious shortages protocol, the SI that's been laid from the management that's been laid by the Department of Health. And we'll continue to engage and uh, support the medicine supply contingency planning program. Um, we have our committee summit uh, on the 14th of February, uh, which is uh, looming uh, uh, quite close. Um, obviously, the, the normal committees will be meeting, but we also have a particular uh, new meeting of the trade group. So we're looking at uh, trade issues. And if you're interested in those, uh, do please sign up and come along. Uh, that will be an important forum for thinking through uh, issues if the UK is to have an independent or an aligned trade policy as to how we might engage with that. We do have uh, our next Brexit lead network in the in the in the face-to-face uh, -face meeting. Uh, BIA and ABPI uh, jointly run that face-to-face uh, -face meeting with uh, a great cast of, um, uh, of players from the Whitehall uh, world who are engaged in the details of this for our sector. Do sign up and come along if you're interested. And in the next month, we will be launching our BIA Brexit microsite where we put uh, in one place uh, our publications, public statements, and some presentations and members only briefing. Uh, so uh, it will be uh, uh, available to members at biabrexit.org and we should have it up and running uh, by uh, the end of the month. Um, the lead network uh, is uh, sign upable at this address uh, and there's links to it, to it on, our, on our website. So where are we at? Keep calm and carry on as always. Theresa May's deal has been heavily defeated. The government and parliamentarians are trying to find a way forward. Could no deal be dead by the end of January if the Bowles uh, secret plan, cunning plan comes through? Who knows? Uh, but uh, there seems to be a significant game in town this week. And I uh, refer the honourable members to Erskine May, not Theresa May. Uh, parliamentary um, process and protocol really matters. And this is why uh, John Burkell, the Speaker of the House of Commons, is a particularly important figure at the moment. Um, you've probably seen that uh, the government aren't very happy with him and may not make him appear when he finishes his job there. Uh, because he's seen as um, having done some stuff that is uh, 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 deleterious to the way that they want to operate. Um, but um, with an unwritten constitution, uh, these things are uh, fungible in the UK. The Queen is sovereign in Parliament. So, uh, so it will be really interesting to see uh, how that plays out. And we may see um, anything happen, and it probably will. Remembering all of that, our position remains the same as the BIA. Uh, we want uh, a formal relationship uh, after exit day uh, on regulation and trade. We want to continue supply of uh, medicines. This is nothing new. Uh, this is all the stuff that you've asked us to lobby on for, 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 for many months and years. We will continue to advocate these positions, avoid duplication of red tape, uh, ensure patients can get access to treatment. Uh, we want people to be able to move around easily. We want R&D funding to continue and engage. Um, uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, this is the type of... Uh, uh, of, 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 of argument that we uh, we continue to take to, to parliamentarians, uh, nothing new here. I've done gone through this before, but please, uh, um, in, in all revolutions, half things change and half of things stay the same. I think the fundamentals of our sector are uh, very strong. We still have, uh, we're taking uh, great science, world-class science, turning it into 
uh, into amazing uh, innovation that is wanted around the world, uh, in part as the world gets richer and the middle class grow and the middle class age, we are in a good position. Healthcare is what people want and there's plenty that needs to be gone after because it's not as if uh, there is a cure for every uh, every uh, disease, unfortunately. So there's plenty more that needs to be done. This is, this is difficult stuff that the UK has a strong track record in and we have great companies uh, working in all facets of our sector on. With that, I'm going to stop, take my breath, and I uh, hope that some of you have some questions uh, for us, which I would ask you to type in. And whilst you're uh, typing in, we will have a look and see if anybody has any thoughts. The email address for the clinical trials contingency uh, again. We will find that whilst, uh, uh, and, and read it out. So this was the... Um, if you haven't got the details and stuff from uh, from the DH on clinical trials, the email you should contact is, I'm going to read it out, ctcontingencyplanning at dhsc.gov.uk. That's ctcontingencyplanning at dhsc.gov.uk. I'm going to count to 10. And if I've a uh, little more detail on the serious shortages protocol uh, I've been asked for. Now, this was laid today at about lunchtime. So uh, the stage that they are at is that they have been, uh, I think um, there's been some industry uh, engagement before these were, 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 were laid. These are the technical legal instruments that um, that enable it. I'm trying to remember if it was part of which consult the consultation. Was it part of an MHRA consultation? I can't remember. No, it was no. a separate. It was a separate one. I think it was done very rapidly, wasn't it? Yeah, at the end of last year. I can send the link to the statutory instrument if that's helpful. Yeah. So there is a there is a new link. We'll we'll send out the um the the link to the new SI which has been laid today, which has some background uh, information uh, on it to you, Ian, as you've asked uh, after that one. They are being laid. I think the bit being being laid in the Lord. They have Lords. They haven't gone through any form of discussion on of uh, 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 either the committees or the chambers of of, of, the, of the of Parliament yet. I take it that all of you will be now rushing off either to watch your favourite Monty Python videos, explain them to your German colleagues. Oh no, another couple more questions have come in, uh, or get your pint of ale. I was going to say, but. Uh, um, uh, more questions on the serious shortage protocol. I'm afraid, guys, I've not had a chance to read it. I've seen that it is laid. So uh, uh, will the decision decision be triggered or new guidance issued? Um, I don't know is the honest answer. The link to uh, so uh, again, we'll send you more detail as we see it on the 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 the, the, the size if you write to them. Um, the link to register for the Brexit lead network is. Um, through the, uh, this is an odd one for us because it's through the ABPI website, is it? Yeah, so um, we take turns organising these events and it is ABPI's turn um, because it falls when we have a lot of events and then we um, swap around. So the web, the address is um, www.cvent.com forward slash D, D forward slash PBQH42. Um, but I can send that to you. And we'll make sure that's on our events on our website as well in the in the coming days. We're a little bit busy with our gala dinner at the moment, uh, which will be a fantastic event on Thursday. So uh, bear with us. Um, Duncan, you have some questions. I'm trying to under what under what circumstances can the um, European Heads of Government Group instruct the Commission to renegotiate? Um, well, the Commission work for the. Um, the heads of government. I don't. The, the honest answer is I don't know the question to that one. Uh, I, I would imagine um, that this is unprecedented for for European leaders. Uh, I don't get the sense that there is that that is um, seen as a, a near term prospect. But uh, they'll get together under the Romanian presidency in various um, meetings. I'm trying to think when the next heads of government is. I don't know whether they'll be in formals in the margins at Davos next week. Um, European Council, 21st and 22nd of March. Yeah, the, 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 that's the next obvious, the 22nd, 1st, 22nd of March is the next obvious one where they could 
do so, but I think that they are looking for and seeking a plan that is deliverable in the UK first to, to, to engage against rather than um, offering things without with lack of clarity. And, and probably they are a little sore that um, the deal that they agreed, nego negotiated and agreed has been, um, uh, has been um, unable to be ratified by the UK Parliament, uh, both through delay in December and, uh, and, a, and a significant vote this week. So um, I think, uh, I, I don't know, but I don't get the sense that that's, that's likely. Okay, unless there's any more, um, we've been going for 45 minutes. Um, thank you very much for your, uh, uh, for your time. I will uh, move on to uh, close the webinar with the following. Um, uh, we've got a few events coming up. Uh, the gala dinner, the BIA gala dinner, I uh, look forward to seeing many of you uh, on Thursday uh, and I'm delighted to say that uh, uh, the VIPs that are joining us uh, will include the new minister uh, as well as a, a speech from, uh, a short speech from uh, the chief executive of the NHS in England, uh, Simon Stevens. So if you do have the chance, um, I think uh, today is the last chance we'll take for an individual ticket, but if you're desperate to come uh, and uh, you email me very quickly, we might be able to to fit you in on the back table. Um, the committee summit on the 14th of February uh, is uh, a great day where uh, expert committees come together. Uh, and the following day, we're planning to do our webinar, which will be Friday the 15th. We've talked about the lead network and people have asked around uh, joining it on 25th of Feb. Uh, we're in Scotland on the 28th of Feb, so I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, March, we are in Cambridge, and um, we have our own in biotech event, uh, and uh, the dates there for uh, networking breakfast and CEO investor forum are also there if you want to get together and see us in person. Um, uh, if you're not a member or you're interested, do please in email uh, John, John Cudlick on this email address, yes, jcudlick at bioindustry.org. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, join us if you're not a formal member. Uh, and uh, registration is open uh, for the next, meet, uh, next one of these, which we plan for the 15th of February, uh, unless things have changed so dramatically that we bring it forward. But uh, uh, I hope that we can summarise where things are at uh, for you uh, uh, on 15th of February, uh, just after Valentine's Day. Many thanks and enjoy your weekend.